Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, as you enter the chat and connect to audio, I'll give everyone just a minute. Uh, my name is Devin Thompson. I am with the Office of Admissions here at the College of Charleston, and we are so excited to speak with you all this evening about the College of Charleston Charleston Bridge Program. Tonight, you're going to be joined by um, two of my wonderful colleagues from CFC. We have uh, Mindy Miley, uh, Assistant Vice President for First Year and Bridge programs and student services here at the College of Charleston. Um, and we also have Laura Sanders, Associate Director for In-State Admissions. Um, and if you are from the upstate, you may have met Laura over the past year. Um, before we get started, just a few reminders. Um, please keep your um, mics muted and uh, you can keep your screen on. It's always nice. I know to see other students um, and other folks that might be joining you in this program, but if you will keep your mics muted, um, that will help kind of cut down on background noise. And we will be taking questions at the end. So if you have any questions along the way, just drop them in the chat. And after um, Mindy and Laura speak to you all about the program, we'll take that live Q&A at that time. So with that, I am now going to turn it over to Mindy. Oh, thank you so much, Devin. So and thanks everyone for joining us this evening. It's great to see familiar names of students that have already made deposits and are planning to participate in Charleston Bridge and also those that are considering uh, joining us here on the College of Charleston campus this fall. Uh, just a little bit about my uh, background and involvement. I, I've been at the College of Charleston in various capacities uh, for 30 years and uh, spent the last uh, five year, four years actually working with the Charleston Bridge Program. So I am the uh, director of the program and we will be going into our fifth year of Charleston Bridge. So uh, my role tonight is to tell you a little bit about Charleston Bridge and why uh, hopefully that you will consider participating in the program. Um, bridge programs are not a new thing for colleges. Um, they're done in various forms, but I can say that this particular bridge program is different than others that you may have been uh, heard about or considering. So I do want to talk about really why you should think about uh, choosing Charleston Bridge. And Devin, if you can go to the next slide for me. So um, some of the things that you may already be aware of is that our Charleston Bridge program is a one semester program. Um, many of these programs are for a full year. Uh, what also makes it unique is that the students participating in Charleston Bridge are actually taking classes on the College of Charleston campus and residing in uh, College of Charleston residence halls. So this is a partnership between uh, the College of Charleston and Trident Technical College. And Trident Technical College um, is also in Charleston in the North Charleston area. And we have faculty there that come to the College of Charleston campus and teach classes here. So uh, that is very unique because uh, Charleston Bridge students are staying on campus so they get familiar with our campus. Um, and all the Trident faculty have office hours on the College of Charleston campus. Um, some other uh, really unique things about it is that students have access to College of Charleston academic support services, such as academic advisors, uh, the Center for Student Learning. They also use uh, facilities at the College of Charleston, which include our fitness center, um, our intramural sports, uh, our student life activities, which include student clubs and organizations. They also have access to student health services um, and a variety of, you know, all of the facilities that um, any other College of Charleston student would have. Some other uh, really key things about Charleston Bridge is a very uh, intentional supportive program. So students have a support network, which include myself and the Charleston Bridge staff. Students also have a peer mentor, which is a College of Charleston student to help support them during the fall semester, as well as a success seminar instructor, which is a, a College of Charleston staff member. Um, so we will be working with you the entire uh, fall semester. Now, I assume that everyone that uh, is considering Charleston Bridge wants to be a proud College of Charleston graduate and cross the cistern at graduation. 
and, and that's our goal. If students meet the requirements in the fall, they will be admitted to the College of Charleston in the spring semester. The great thing about living on campus and using the resources at the College of Charleston is you're very familiar with using the services here. You're very familiar with the campus. You've made friends here on the campus already. So it's a smooth transition for students to come from the fall semester out of the Charleston Bridge program and then come in in the spring semester as a College of Charleston student. That support in the spring continues because students that move into our um, from Charleston Bridge will be moved into our first year impact program, which simply means that you'll have support from staff members and a peer academic coach during the spring and the fall semester. So um, in my opinion, uh, it's a great way to for students to have that support through their entire first year. And that does tend to be the most difficult time for college students is their first year on a college campus. Um, some of the things I mentioned earlier about access to um, activities and facilities, that includes our academic advising uh, and planning center. Of course, the Adelstone Library, which is located downtown. Any of the athletic events, um, you would get a Cougar card, which is the name of our ID card. So you would get into athletic events free, um, campus recreation, and I men mentioned the fitness center. Um, you'd also have access to our career center, uh, civic engagement, the Center for Student Learning, which is our academic support center, um, the counseling center, all of the resources that College of Charleston students have. Um, our students in Charleston Bridge have access to those. Um, the only thing that would, would be excluded would be um, participation in Greek life, which you could do in the spring semester, um, and being employed on campus, which you could do in the spring semester, and uh, participation in our, on our athletic teams, our roster athletic teams. But student computing support, health services, that is um, all available to you. Now, of course, there um, are some things you're going to have to do in the fall, um, which aren't hard things at all. You'd have to earn a minimum of 12 credit hours. Um, most of our students take around 14 to 16 hours in a semester. So earning 12 credit hours is very doable. Um, so that should be a piece of cake for any of you guys to do. Earning at least a 2.6 cumulative GPA, and that's in the fall semester. The courses that you're taking, uh, the Trident Technical College courses that you're taking in the fall, you'd want to earn at least a 2.6 GPA in those courses. Um, that doesn't include courses that you've taken at other schools or perhaps taken at Trident Tech. It's the GPA you earn it here in the fall semester, which is about a B average, um, which uh, is totally if you uh, focus on what you're doing, you can all do that. Um, we do have a student success seminar that we ask students to attend. Um, we have seven seminars. They're all on Mondays at 5.30, only 50 minutes of your time. And that is with College of Charleston staff and your peer mentor. And we're gonna go over things uh, to help you be successful during the fall semester. Um, things like using the technology, campus resources, um, those kind of things that will help you be successful. And the last thing that we ask of you is that you use the College of Charleston Center for Student Learning at least only two times during the fall. Center for Student Learning is located on the first floor of the Adelstone Library. It's our academic support area um, that offers our tutoring service and walk-in labs. So our students, our College of Charleston students that are most successful are those students that use the Center for Student learning often. Um, so we want you to get used to visiting them, getting to know the staff and using the services. Um, it says two times. I encourage students to go frequently. Two times is minimal. Um, but really to get the most out of a service like that, you would want to use it consistently. And uh, there's some great folks on staff in the Center for Student Learning. So that could be very helpful to you. So those are the only four requirements. You do those four things, um, we'll, we'll review your grades, we'll review those, and you can be admitted in the spring. So some things that I, I would need for you to do, and we'll go to the next slide. Of course, and, um, Laura's gonna talk about this, but um, first you gotta respond to our offer to participate in Charleston Bridge, and that May 1st deadline is important. 
um, you would pay that College of Charleston deposit and housing ap application fee to us. Um, one thing, as I mentioned earlier, is that you all College of Char all Charleston Bridge students would reside on campus in a residence hall, and there are three options: Barry Residence Hall, College, um, Lodge, and Liberty. All close walking distance to my office, if you if you need to come visit. Um, but those are the three residence hall choices you would have. Um, you would also be uh, paired with a roommate that's also in the Charleston Bridge program, and the students are on that same hall. But you would there would be College of Charleston students in your residence hall, so you'd have opportunities to make friends both within the program, outside of the program as well. The other thing we want you to do is attend a Charleston Bridge orientation. Our orientation uh, will be virtual this summer. Uh, it will be on June 28th. It'll be a kickoff event where um, you'll hear from Trident Technical College in the morning and we'll have some more information in the afternoon. Um, the orientation is just to get you familiar with some of the uh, processes that go on between the two institutions. One thing I want to mention about orientation, if you deposit, you plan to participate in Charleston Bridge. Uh, what will happen at that point is you will be contacted by an academic advisor from Trident Technical College. And that advisor is going to help you register for the fall classes that are available to you. So you'll create your schedule for fall with the help of that advisor. So you will have your schedule before the orientation still be able to make changes during the summer as needed with that advisor. And then once you arrive on campus at the College of Charleston, you'll be working with our staff if you need to make changes like that. Um, so that's helpful as well because you're gonna be able to register in the summer and have your classes all ready before orientation. And just some other dates to mention, um, we do need immunization record forms and things like that by Student Health Services. We'll need any transcripts that Laura's gonna talk about, I'm sure. And then of course, August the 1st would be, be when you would have to pay your tuition or establish a payment plan with Trident Technical College. So I do wanna mention that although you're paying your deposit and housing application fee to the College of Charleston initially, um, the tuition, the actual meal plan, um, and residence hall fees, all of that is paid to Trident Technical College. Um, in addition to working out financial aid type of arrangements. So um, you're working with two different colleges, um, but of course, both staffs at College of Charleston and, and Trident Technical College can help, work, uh, help you through the process as far as that goes. And then finally, um, so you may find a lot of information on the Charleston Bridge website. Um, admissions uh, has a, some information about Charleston Bridge but you'll also find that new student programs at the College of Charleston has a Charleston Bridge website that has a lot of the specific information. Uh, my office is in new student programs, which is where the um, Charleston Bridge staff is located. Um, general inquiries can be sent to bridge at cnc.edu, which is an email that comes to me. Um, and then there's finally some program contact information at the bottom, that's my email address. Um, at the bottom. Um, I'm sure if you do a search for my name at College of Charleston, it'll also come up where you can reach me at any time. Um, Katie Hovis is also the program contact at Trident Technical College. She could help answer any questions about uh, financial aid arrangements, billing, anything that um, Trident Tech work is working with, Katie can help. Katie's actually a graduate from College of Charleston as well. It just worked out that way, not that we planned it that way. Um, so we work together um, quite a bit as well. I'm going to let Laura, I think this, uh, this is where Laura comes in and then we'll take some questions. All right. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Devin. I'm Laura Sanders from the Office of Admissions at the College of Charleston. I have been with the college for 18 years now and been working with the bridge program since 2017. So it's a great honor actually to work with your students as we see them come in as applicants, transition through the bridge program and become um, that full College of Charleston student in the spring and be successful. So I wanted to address oftentimes students and their parents wonder why they were offered Charleston Bridge. And I wanna give you the assurance that this is an invitation only program. 
for students who have applied to the College of Charleston, but we feel may benefit from a transitional fall semester. We have every confidence that these students can and will be successful and feel that Charleston Bridge will be an important beginning to this journey. So I just wanted to mention that because oftentimes students do question why they were offered Charleston Bridge. We know that these are great students and we think this is a great opportunity for you to join us in the fall. So I'm gonna talk about next steps for um, those who have deposited or you're planning to deposit after this evening. So the first thing you wanna do is confirm your enrollment. And all of these directions are on our website. I also encourage you to take pictures as we go through the slides, but know that all of this information is taken directly off of our website. So first, we're gonna encourage you to pay your enrollment confirmation um, via credit card or check, that's preferred. You can't, or e-check, you can ultimately print it off and mail it in snail mail to the College of Charleston, and we will accept that as well. But to pay online, you wanna to go to My Charleston, use your CFC ID. Um, if you're not sure, you can always email any of us and we can help you with that, but you'll be able to find that in your Charleston Bridge offer letter. Um, so you're gonna use that CFC as the username. Your default password will be your CFC ID followed by your birthday in the format, um, followed by A and an exclamation mark. And then you'll be prompted to update your password and set up security questions. Once you're into your My Charleston, you can select the My Accounts tab, scroll down to the bottom and log into eBill account. Um, there'll be a new window that pops up and select the deposit and make sure that you're selecting the deposit for Charleston Bridge. Um, oftentimes the students for some reason just select the wrong one, but if you do select the wrong one and realize that, certainly you can reach out to us. So confirming your enrollment deposit, confirming your enrollment by depositing. I'll let you go ahead, Devin. Setting up your My Charleston account and CFC email address, please know that your CFC email address is how we communicate with the student. So make sure that you're not only set that up, but then that you're checking it regularly. You can link it to whatever other account that you have, if it's a Gmail, iCloud, that type, Yahoo, any of those things. But once we process your enrollment confirmation deposit, you'll receive your permanent and updated CFC credentials along with your CFC email access. And again, just make sure that you're accessing the email. I encourage students to allow their parents to have access to that as well, because there are many things that need to be taken care of, such as paying for that tuition that's gonna be due or setting up that payment plan. So um, make sure that you use the updated username moving forward with your original password. Next, we're gonna talk about applying for financial aid. If you haven't done so already, hopefully you have, make sure to complete your FAFSA. When you submit your FAFSA, FAFSA, make sure that you list Trident Technical College as well as the College of Charleston. So make sure you're, you're selecting both schools and to adequately, adequately plan for a full year of enrollment. That's why we have to have both College of Charleston and Trident Tech, even though remember that you're paying tuition at Trident Tech in the fall. Next, we're gonna ask you to apply for housing and select a meal plan. Um, these are due by May 1st, so that's an important date to remember. I know you guys have a lot of important dates to keep in mind. So again, maybe take a picture of this or um, make sure to refer back to our website. But you want to make sure, because as a Charleston Bridge Program participant, you must live on campus at the College of Charleston. And you also must purchase a freshman meal plan. Housing applications must be completed by May 1. So making that enrollment deposit does put give you a spot in the program, but it's not secured until you have applied for housing. So again, make sure that you're doing that. To access the housing application, again, it's done through your My Charleston login, as we talked about, um, and clicking on the, the housing and dining portal icon in the top right, and you'll be able to um, pay your $50 housing application fee as well as complete the, um, the housing application. Make sure that you update or that you list your emergency contact and answer your profile questions, select a meal plan, and then create a roommate group if you'd like to. Again, all Charleston Bridge students will be assigned with other Charleston Bridge students. So that's going to be your, your roommates. Um, students are, who are accepted to, I'm sorry, I was reading it and I should just tell you that, um, again, you do have to have the, the meal plan and you have to live in 
something that I think can be helpful is to go on our website and look at the residence hall, look at Barry, look at College Dorm, look at Liberty. And so you know that you're gonna be assigned a roommate and you're gonna be assigned within one of those residence halls. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to the next one. Next, if you wanted to register for orientation, if you guys weren't all muted, I would ask who remembers what the date is for orientation. Ms. Miley talked about that earlier. Um, so make sure that you're looking at that so you know when your uh, virtual orientation is going to be. That registration is already open. It opened March 1st. So you must attend the orientation. Again, log on to your, your My Charleston account and select the academic services at the top. Scroll down to the Charleston Bridge and click on Charleston Bridge Orientation Registration. There is no fee to attend the orientation. I'm sorry, the orientation and no placement testing is required um, for, you, for the students participating in Charleston Bridge. Um, families, as always, we welcome you to be a part of that virtual orientation, but it's not required, but we certainly encourage you just so that you know what's happening with your student. Um, sending in your final official high school transcripts as well as those for um, some students in Bridge will have taken some dual enrollment courses. So you wanna make sure that you reach out to the corresponding technical school and have that transcript sent to us as well so that any of those credits that you have coming to you will be awarded. So just um, that's easily done by talking to your high school counselor, letting them know that you're gonna attend the bridge program at College of Charleston and they'll make sure to send that final official high school transcript. When you applied, we accepted unofficial, but when once you have graduated, we will need that official transcript. So program information, again, anything that, um, that I talked about tonight is available on the website. We're under next steps under College of Charleston. I, again, I'm Laura Sanders. I am your contact person from the Office of Admissions. We try to make this a seamless transition into our bridge program with uh, new student programs. So at any time, regardless of who you reach out to, whether it's myself, Trident Tech, new student programs with Dr. Miley, any of us, even Devin Thompson would respond to you and give you any information that you need. So please don't hesitate to reach out. We realize that this can be a, um, a difficult process sometimes when you're looking at all the different entities that are involved in this process but we're here to hopefully make this seamless for you. And so don't hesitate to reach out to us. And I think now we're gonna open it up for questions. Yeah, thank you, Laura, and thank you, Mindy. Um, like Laura said, we are now going to take Q&A from the chat and it looks like there are some questions in there already. So I'm just gonna um, read these out. And uh, if you all wanna keep adding some questions in, please do. And Mindy and Laura, I will just let y'all whoever wants to take um, a question first. So um, this first question asks, what day is the deposit due? So deposits are due by May 1st. So you do have a little bit of uh, time to think about it. That's why we were um, wanting to bring you this virtual session tonight. So that gives you, we know, we realize that you have a lot to think about. And so May 1st is the, the deadline. And I'll take the second one that says, if you live in Charleston, do you have to live on campus? Or if you live close to campus, do you have to be, do you have to live on campus housing? And the answer is yes. As a Charleston Bridge participant, you do have to live on campus. Perfect, thank you. Um, so we have one more question in the chat, uh, or a few more coming in. Uh, Mindy, maybe you wanna take this one. Um, what is the uh, final GPA required to get I think they mean from the transition from the bridge program into spring semester. Yeah, um, you would want to earn at least a 2.6 cumulative um, GPA in the fall semester to be considered for the spring. Um, that's one of the four requirements. So what we're looking at is that you meet all four of those requirements. Um, but the 2.6 GPA is very important. The reason why we picked 2.6 is because we have found that, that students that can earn a 2.6 in that first semester tend to be successful at the College of Charleston in their next semester. So, um, and of course, all of the students that are participating in Bridge are capable of 2.6 and more. 2.6 is a minimum, um, but you could do, you know, we expect students can do much better than that. So, but 2.6 is what we're definitely looking for. 
Um, I, w I wanted to mention that I read that differently. So I was thinking that perhaps. It could have been in a, from the admission side too. So From the admission side. So I'll speak to that from okay. the <laughs> We, um, we don't have a final GPA. We just identify those students from the components of either test scores, GPA, um, class rank. It can be a number of things. So there is no, no final GPA that we're looking for to invite a student to bridge. It's just the overall snapshot or picture of a student that we feel is best suited um, by participating in bridge program. Perfect. Thank you both for answering both sides of that question. Um, okay, our next question asks, uh, what is the tuition for Trident Technical College? Well, as it is right now, that admissions is on the um, admissions website. If you go there and look at bridge program cost of attendance, it would show you what the tuition um, and fees are at Trident at this time. Um, that, that could change in July, um, which every year they reevaluate that. It would probably be minimal if it even does change, um, but that information is on the admissions website. Um, and that would also include the cost of the residence hall and meal plans, which can vary depending on which one you pick. So um, it could be different for depending on which route you go. Thank you. Um... Laura or Mindy, if you're if you have that link pulled up to the tuition, if one of you could drop it in the chat, okay, um, yeah. that would be great. I had it right here, so Perfect. I will do that. Thank you. So this next question asks um, that the student and parent have been filling out the housing application, but the only dormitory option listed for their selection as a bridge student is College Lodge. Barry or Liberty is not listed. Should we? We'll let Mindy. <laughs> okay, um, that would that's odd, but I, I did just put housing at cfc.edu in the chat. Um, that is our campus housing office. Um, I would email them. You should have three options, um, and of course, I will follow up with them after this. But that's not helping us this evening, is it? Um, <laughs> but do reach out to housing um, and let them. Uh, know your issues they're very responsive if you're having trouble um accessing something but you should have the options for all three residence halls as far as i know but it's housing at cfc.edu and my apologies for that may just be a technical glitch so hey, uh, technology <laughs> straightened out Okay, um, this next question is in regards to financial aid. Um, when will this information be available from Trident Tech? Um, there may be a lag, I guess, between the final um, bridge enrollment on our end. Will that financial aid package be available from Trident when we pass along that information to their offices? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, it's hard for me to say when you'll get it from Trident Tech since I'm not at Trident Tech, but when you complete the FAFSA and you list both of the school codes, um, College of Charleston and Trident Tech has your financial aid information electronically. Um, from that point, they will package your financial aid award and they will be communicating with the student in most cases. Um, you would have a, you have a Trident Technical College email um, if you've deposited and, and that kind of thing. So they would be communicating with that email. Uh, and, and I must say, checking emails is not something that students enjoy, but that's just a part of being a college student. Um, I guess with Charleston Bridge, you have two emails, so it's twice as fun. Um, so you'll check Trident Tech emails as well as College Charleston emails. And if you don't know already, colleges love to email students a lot. So you will be getting financial aid information from Trident Tech, um, I guess, as soon as you make your deposit um, and that kind of thing. Uh, if you're on the Bridge website, you're also going to see um, contact information for College of Charleston as well as Trident Tech, which includes um, Trident Tech's financial aid office. So you could reach out to them directly. Um, now, once you're admitted in the spring, College of Charleston will be able to pull in your financial aid information and you'll be packaged for financial aid at the College of Charleston for spring. So um, 
of course, uh, both financial aid offices will can assist you with the process. Uh, I know it sounds like a lot, but um, it has worked out well, and uh, both staffs are very responsive if you need help in that area. Thank you, Mindy. Um, I've seen a few questions about roommates and housing, and just as a reminder, um, Charleston Bridge students will room with other Charleston Bridge students um, when they enroll in the fall. Correct? Oh, yes. Okay. That's all right. Now, um, sure. now, you may, if you're on the housing website, and you, you'll see on the sidebar there's information for Charleston Bridge students. Um, it does mention there is a Facebook group uh, for students in Charleston Bridge. So if you wanted to connect with someone that's in the Charleston Bridge program and maybe you guys do want a room together, housing can work with you in doing that. Um, otherwise, if you're just, you know, otherwise housing is gonna match you with a roommate who's in the, in the program. Um, but yes, it is true. It, it helps um, students are kind of take care of one another make sure that everybody gets to class because they're taking a lot of the same classes um, and you know, are able to form study groups and build a community um, of students in the program. But of course our students have friends that are both in the program and then outside of the program. It's really pretty transparent. I don't think anybody here for our students is that everybody is a, co a college student um, and it doesn't matter what route they're taking they're just wanting to graduate from the College of Charleston. So everybody has the same goal. And that's our goal too, of course. And also I would interject to keep in mind, I know oftentimes students because um, they do know other students who may or may not be in Bridge to remember this is a one semester program. So in the spring, if you if there's you know someone that, that you really want to room with, you can request them and they can request you and certainly the next year. So keeping that in mind that this is a one semester endeavor. Yes, we, well, I mean, we do have students that choose to stay in the same hall in the same room and maybe the same roommate. We have other students like I want to live in a different hall or a different room or different roommates and they change in the spring. So, um, which is a, that was a one benefit and one of the benefits of having a one semester program. It's like you meet the requirements, you do what you need to do um, and you focus on your academics in the spring, then you'll have the other options open to you as far as where you want to live on campus and participating in things like Greek life or working on campus or playing in the pep band and all of those other things. Perfect. Okay, and um, this next question is regarding the move in date for bridge students. What date is that? That's a good question. <laughs> I was going to answer that it's the same as. Uh freshman move in, but I don't know that to be true. So I will put that over to new student program. Well, um, that's difficult for me to answer tonight because there are a lot of things going on with uh, move in. It will happen. It will happen in August. Um, but as far as what specific date, a lot depends on what hall you're in and what floor you're on and what room you're in. Um, given some of our challenges with COVID, um, there's more of a check-in and registration type process. So the times and the dates students are moving in vary. So it's kind of a moving target. And I think that's something that they're still working out. Um, however, once you apply for housing, you'll start hearing from our campus housing office about um, what action you need to take and when you're moving in and all that kind of um, information. I'm sorry, I don't have a real specific date for you right now. Unless you want to know when classes start, <laughs> <laughs> which is the important date. For me, that's the important date. Um, we'll be here the we oh, go yes, ahead. Okay, our next question asks, how many total students are enrolled in the bridge program generally um, from year to year? Um, it's varied. I would, I keep it I wouldn't think this semester it would be more than 150 students. It would probably be about our max. Um, and I've had as many as 232 to 132. So it's varied. But I wouldn't think it'd get over 150. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, just a reminder, this uh, recording is, or excuse me, this event is being recorded um, and it will be sent out to all students who receive the initial invite. So um, if you need a reminder after we conclude tonight, this will be sent out to you all uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so the next question is um, regarding tours, and I know this is probably a topic on everyone's mind, and I'll take this one. I'm on the visitor services team in the Office of Admissions. Um, we are currently booked for the duration of the spring semester for campus tours. However, um, we do have a few opportunities for self-guided tours um, called Build Your Own Campus Tour, and these are a little bit more expanded than your typical self-guided tour. So you'll have the opportunity to still walk the same route that a guided tour would take you. Um, and then we'll have different faculty members and students stationed along the way that you can speak to and ask any questions as you um, go along. So check out the admissions website. Any dates that are still available will be listed on the calendar. Um, if you don't see these opportunities listed on the calendar, that means the event is full. Um, but if you are interested in coming to take the self-guided tour, we also recommend that you reach out either to Mindy and her team if you have questions about, you know, um, Charleston Bridge while you're in town or um, any of our counselors in the Office of Admissions. We're always um, happy to sit down and chat with you all when you make it to campus. Okay, so um, we've definitely covered a lot of um, roommate topics and we're going to move on to the next question um, about will classes be online or in person for the fall semester? Um, classes will be in person for the fall semester at least as of tonight. That is my answer. <laughs> um, uh, some professors may choose to supplement that with some online um, tools for submitting your assignments and things like that. But at this point, our classes will be face-to-face -face in the fall, which includes our success seminars will be face-to-face. -face. We are very excited about it. We yes. are looking forward to having you all get back to campus for a somewhat normal <laughs> return to life this fall. Okay, well, I'm about to drop the admissions events at cfc.edu email in the chat. Um, of course, you can always contact Mindy or Laura directly if you have any outstanding questions or anything that we didn't cover. Um, but you can also email this email address too, and um, we can get your question to Mindy or Laura as well. Um, but with that, we thank you again all for joining us. We know that this is um, a big consideration. Oh, we have a couple more questions <laughs> popping in. Um, the meal plan options, guys, before we conclude, I'm sorry. Um, Laura, can you drop a, a link to the campus dining into the chat for me? Thank you. Um, meal plan options vary from family to family. We just request that students have we require rather not request that um, students have a meal plan. So you can really choose and explore from the campus dining website what uh, meal plan is going to be best for you and your family um, or your student rather while they're here. Um, and this last question, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cover this. Is transportation provided for students to um, try that? Oh. Well, you don't have to go to try that. That's, oh, that's right. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of it is that try that comes to you. The, the faculty have, they come here to campus and teach classes. You can walk right out of your residence hall at Barry, which is right behind me, come across the street and go to class. And Trident has uh, uh, offices on the College of Charleston campus. So if you need to meet with your faculty member, they would be available to you. So um, you don't have to go to Trident. Um, and as far as ordering books and things like that from Trident Text Bookstore, uh, you can order those online and they can send those right to your house. So, yeah. Just like Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> you just, well, yep. All right. Well, again, thank you all for your thoughtful questions. Um, if you think of anything again after the event concludes, please contact us. We are here for you always. Um, and like Mindy and Laura have both said, we want to make this transition as smooth as possible. So we look forward to seeing you all in the fall, if not before then, if you come take a tour of campus. Um, and we wish you all well and go Cougars. Have a good night. Take care. <laughs>